The 2024 presidential race is heating up with both campaigns on the campaign trail. Former President Trump rallied supporters in Montana tonight, while Vice President Harris spoke in Arizona after securing a major endorsement. CBS's Natalie Brand reports from Phoenix. Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz took their message to Arizona voters Friday night. Thousands braved triple-digit heat to get a glimpse of the new Democratic nominee and her running mate on their week-long battleground tour. Do you think the enthusiasm is going to continue? I certainly hope so. Um, and I think seeing all these people together supporting her ticket is a great, great thing to see. While campaigning in a key border state, the Democratic duo addressed the issue of immigration and border security. We know our immigration system is broken and we know what it takes to fix it. Strong border security and an earned pathway to citizenship. A topic former President Donald Trump hammered at his rally Friday night in Bozeman, Montana. They found out that this is a phony that we're running against a person that had no idea what she was doing on the border. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels. Both Harris and Trump released new ads this week talking about getting tough on border security. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are allowing illegal people to come into our country. At the same time, the vice president is trying to mobilize support from Latino voters, receiving a rare endorsement from LULAC, the nation's oldest and largest Latino civil rights organization. The first time the group has backed a presidential candidate. But DACA recipient Jose Patino told us he wants to hear more about the campaign's vision for immigration reform. I think there's an opportunity for the Harris and Watts to actually see this is huge gap of people who are undecided. With an eye on the Southwest, the Harris campaign is beefing up staff and says it's opened about a dozen offices in Arizona and around 13 offices in Nevada. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Phoenix, Arizona. Donald Trump's plane was diverted on its way to Bozeman, Montana due to a mechanical issue, but landed safely in nearby Billings. Vice President Kamala Harris will make her way to Las Vegas, Nevada on Saturday. Governor Andy Beshear and First Lady Brittany Beshear released their 2023 tax returns. Governor Beshear has an adjusted gross income of $214,600. Bashir encouraged other state leaders to release their returns. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman and her husband also released their taxes. Their gross income totaled more than $224,000. TGIF, the weekend is here. And take a look at some places across the area, the WYMT studios over towards Mount Vernon, Logan, London, Corbin, Jenkins, and Pikeville. We're seeing a beautiful evening out there. Clear skies right now is the rule across the area. And right now, again, lots of stars out there. 70 degrees is the current temperature and hazard. Humidity. It's up at 78%. We have a nice, calm wind out there at this hour. Other temperatures across the area play out like this in the 70s towards Moorhead, 73 Jackson, 70 in Manchester, 75 in Somerset, 71 over towards Middlesbrough. So here's the setup right now. We had that cold front finally push through. That's what's bringing in that north and northwesterly wind. And that's what's going to keep us cool as we go throughout the weekend. The question is, how long will this nice weather last? I'll have that answer in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Steve. Eric, thanks. A man could spend two decades in prison for the death of London Police Sergeant Logan Medlock. Last night, after seven hours of deliberation, a Western Kentucky jury convicted Casey Byrd of murder, DUI, and several counts of criminal mischief. Evidence showed he was intoxicated when his, his truck hit Sergeant Medlock's cruiser. There was some debate over extreme indifference to human life, which is typically an issue in DUI murder cases. We had two accident reconstructions said he was doing 70 plus miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone um, five seconds before the crash and that he ran a red light which he ultimately t-boned and killed logan the verdict came nearly two years after the deadly drunk driving crash again the jury recommended a 20-year sentence on the murder charge a judge will sentence bird on august 26th one Eastern Kentucky nonprofit is continuing to fight against food insecurity. However, they need the space to do so. WYMT's RJ Johnson has more from Breathitt County. For nearly four years, 
The Breathitt County Hunger Alliance has helped people throughout the county gain access to food. Food is a something that is uh, in high demand. Uh, we do not sit on anything. We try to make sure that it gets to, uh, to those that need it. However, with bouncing from location to location, Executive Director Patsy Clare says they are constantly outgrowing their space. And that is no different at their current location at Beattyville Road. We have to make use of every inch that we have been given. And as you can see inside and stuff, uh, we have went up you know, because space is limited in there. Even with the new storage container, they are once again looking for a new space. We can't find, we haven't been able to find anything here in Breathitt County uh, space-wise. Uh, we thought we were going to be able to use this building next door and stuff. I don't know if that's going to be a reality or not. Saying they might have to move out of the county. The possibility of us moving out of county, that might be become a reality. You know, uh, we may have to do that. So, uh, you know, our options, you know, we're leaving that open as an option. With the future unknown, Claire says one thing is certain. Their ongoing fight against food insecurity will continue. In Breathitt County, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Claire says they also have plans to expand their distributions of clothing and other items. Nighttime maintenance operations are scheduled for Interstate 75 in Laurel County. Officials with the State Highway Department say the maintenance will happen on mile point 31 in both lanes. Lane closings will be in effect from today until August 30th from 7.30 p.m. through 6.30 a.m. Southbound maintenance will be in the first week and a half. Northbound maintenance will happen in the last week and a half. A bridge in Harlan County will be closed some days next week. Officials with the State Highway Department say a bridge on Kentucky 2007 will be closed from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the 14th through the 16th. The bridge is located over the Cumberland River. Officials say drivers can use US 119 or Highway 219 as alternate routes. The times may be adjusted based on weather during those days. Some folks may have noticed a bit more traffic on the roads this week, and that's likely because several school districts are back in session. Law enforcement and school officials want to remind folks to pay attention while they drive in an effort to keep students safe. You might want to get out the door a little earlier and learn your area bus routes. That way, if you're in a hurry, you can possibly take an alternate route. Knox County Sheriff Mike Smith reminds folks of the expectations when you encounter a school bus on the road. When the flashing lights are, are operational on the bus and the arm is extended, we need to stop in all directions around the bus and, uh, and not pass the bus. Even if the lights do not come on, if a bus stops, so should you. Smith says most buses now have surveillance cameras to catch people who violate the rules, and that footage can then be used in court. A fiery plane crash today in Brazil with no survivors. It went down in a neighborhood near Sao Paulo, crashing into the yard of a home. CBS's Chris Van Cleve is tracking the latest. Cell phone video captures the airliner's final moments, dropping thousands of feet in just seconds, falling out of the sky over a residential neighborhood outside Sao Paulo, Brazil. It was a stall. We, well, I think we can pretty much safely assume that. Former NTSB chair Robert Sumwalt is also a retired 737 captain. And you can see the airplane spiraling. That looks to me like a like a flat spin. What caused the, the speed to, to get so low to where the airplane would stall? That remains to be seen. Look how close this person was to the crash as the plane comes down just feet away. The crash sent dark smoke billowing into the air as a fire raged in the wreckage. Voipaz Airlines says there were 61 passengers and crew on flight 2283. There were no survivors. No one on the ground was hurt. The ATR-72, a turboprop popular with regional carriers, was traveling from Cascavel to Sao Paulo. Flying at 17,000 feet, it was nearing the airport when the apparent stall occurred. Would the passengers on board know something was wrong at that point? I hate to say it, but uh, I think that would be a terrifying uh, end of the flight. 
There was an active warning for severe icing in the area where the accident happened. That will be of interest to investigators because while this 14-year-old plane was equipped with an anti-icing system, that exact scenario played out in a fatal crash involving a similar type of ATR-72 back in 1994 in Indiana. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Washington. Authorities say the black box has been found, which is very important to the international investigation into how this could happen. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, it was a great evening to enjoy a festival. We'll take you to Nibrock. And if you have plans to go out there tomorrow, I'll have that forecast coming up in a few minutes. Stay with us.